Hi, today I'm going to be teaching you how to tie a tie, and more specifically, we are going to do a full Windsor knot or a double Windsor knot. And uh, let's start by popping up our collars, and here's my tie. Now, some people would want to prefer to keep the short end of the tie on their left side. I'm personally right handed, so I'm going to keep it on my right side. It doesn't matter too much what side you keep it on. Um, if you're left handed or if you prefer to keep the short end on the left side, then you're basically going to just reverse left and right all the steps that I'm going to about to go through. But I'm right handed, so I'm going to keep this on the right side. And we're going to start by like this long end right here, short end over here. Now, also, the second thing that you have to worry about before you start is the length of the tie. And what I mean by that is how, how much length you want to make the short end have and how much length you want to have on the long end. Uh, because the full Windsor knot does take you know, quite a bit of tie, I'm going to keep the short end a little bit shorter. Um, I'm going to keep it generally to you know, where my heart is. Now, that also depends on how long your tie is. The tie I'm using right now is pretty decent length. Uh, but even so, the Windsor knot again takes up a, you know, quite a bit of length. So, I'm gonna keep it relatively short on this side, and we're gonna start tying. Now, first thing first, um, we're gonna crisscross over. We're gonna keep the long side of the tie on top, not like this, but the long side of the tie, long side of the tie on top here. So, crisscross over here. After you have this uh, X made, we're gonna take the long side of the tie. Bring it under and then over. So crisscross, under, and over. After you made that move, you want to keep it on the same side. And so far, the front of the tie is facing outward. The front of the tie is facing outward. So I'm going to adjust it, make it a little bit firm, make it a little bit tight. And after that step, after that first knot, first loop, we're going to bring it from the back and over to the other side. Not back and up and under again, but back and to the left side now. So back and to the left. So if you made this loop, uh, you'll see the back of the tie now is facing forward. It's really important that you get the orientation of the tie correctly. You don't want your tie, to, and when you're done finishing that, your tie is you know backwards facing out. So I made my uh, loop from the back, from under here, sorry, and the front. And then after you have this, we're going to take an, another over and under action. But this time, we're going to do it from the front and down. Front and down. So uh, if you could use a little bit of your imagination, you could see that I have on the left side, the back of the tie still facing forward. And if you see the knot that I'm creating right now, it's somewhat a, of a triangular shape. Again, you might have to use a little bit of imagination. My, my knot right now might be looking a little bit deformed. It doesn't look like a perfect triangle, but triangular-ish shape. So after you got that shape, and if you don't have this shape, that's okay. Uh, you could adjust it accordingly. You could go back one step, undo one step, uh, but make sure that it looks at least somewhat of a triangular shape. Uh, we're going to do the last step, and this last step is somewhat crucial. And this last step entails on something like this. I'm going to put it forward. And after you make this loop, right, you kind of see that this is kind of how our tie is going to be looking at. And that this is kind of what our people see. I'm going to do these remaining steps by keeping an index finger in the back because it will make my tie a little bit easier as we loop this forward. And then we're going to bring our under right here and then over in the front so now we have this again the tie facing forward and that's how it should look and we're gonna put it through this channel we just created so let's back up one more step so again we we had our we had a really nice uh, kind of triangular shape that we have and by finishing up we're gonna bring it over to the front to cover it up. Again, I'm personally keeping an index finger. You don't have to do this. It just personally helps me a little bit easier. Bring it over in front, under, and then over. Now this very last step is very crucial. Um, you're going to have to feed this tie down this channel. And that's why I kept that index finger here 
Oops. So it makes, you know, it, it creates a little bit of space. It allows me to feed this through a little bit easier. So I'm going to feed it through. Oof. Okay. Feed it through and start pulling over. See my index finger is still inside. It just gives me that space. And after that, I'm going to pull it up. So this isn't a, a triangular shape that I had. It's more more of a trapezoid shape. It's okay. Uh, we're gonna just adjust it. You can always use your finger and pinch it, pinch uh, to get the triangular shape. And after that, you're pretty much done. Now, obviously, I still have quite a bit of length here. So what I'm gonna do is pull the short end. And as you pull on this, your tie, your your tie, and your knot is gonna adjust upwards. But make sure if you're doing any kind of adjustment to the shape or if you're pulling under this short one, make sure one of your hands is pinching this tie. You don't want to lose this shape that you worked so hard to create, this nice triangular shape. So what you're going to do is keep one hand pinching on this as you pull. So I'm going to pull right now. And you can see that because my, my hand is uh, being kept on the shape, it's going to retain. So now it's up here. And as we pop down the collar, do a little bit of adjustment. There you go. This is a full Windsor knot, or some people call it the double Windsor knot. And uh, looks good. Looks good.